Hello everyone and welcome uh, to this discussion which is going to be about uh, digital elevation models and uh, how it is represented in a form of raster in GIS. And before that uh, I would like to mention that uh, uh, so far our journey in this course has been about uh, what is basically GIS, different types of uh, data which we handle in GIS, spatial, non-spatial, different types of spatial data and different types of attributes as well. And then we have also discussed analysis and uh, projection systems and uh, other uh, components or other uh, you know processing of uh, GIS. Now we are uh, going for uh, you know I, I would say another type of processing which would be mainly focused uh, on raster data and especially on digital elevation models. So how uh, digital elevation models can be exploited because we know that digital elevation models are a storehouse of information and uh, theoretically uh, I would say n number of derivatives can be derived but uh, more than 20 or 25 derivatives which we are going to discuss in future classes, future discussion is based basically uh, will be using digital elevation models. So that is why it is very important at this stage to understand fully what is digital elevation model. And then of course uh, uh, we will start utilizing digital elevation models, different types of different uh, digital elevation models of different resolutions generated from different techniques of different resources or uh, downloaded from different uh, sources or we can generate our own. So those things will come little later but first the concept of uh, basically digital elevation model. As a three terms the digital elevation and model, so you say model is not a real world and uh, this one has to remember and it is in digital form and generally we keep as a cell value as a elevation value and therefore we call uh, or give a na general name that is a uh, digital elevation model. But the value of this instead of elevation we can have some other values also concentration of certain elements in case of soil or water or pH value or a population value or any other value we can have in place of elevation. But uh, uh, in like in literature or in software also everything will be handled as a digital elevation model though that the middle term is not elevation this value cell value can be any other value. So it is a basically a 3D representation because though we, we display as a 2D but the third dimension is coming from the cell value. So if it is having uh, the elevation value then we can exploit that elevation value to create a 3D representation of terrain surface otherwise terrain surface would look like flat. So uh, with the uh, different shades of grey. Like if you display a contour map, you do not see a 3D perception or 3D representation. What you see just contour lines having different values, maybe having different colors. So in order to uh, represent a terrain in a 3D, we employ digital elevation model. That is the first application of this. But there are many, many derivatives where this uh, concept of digital elevation model can be exploited for many, many things. Now as you know that uh, uh, since 1972 onward uh, for the earth uh, we have been uh, satellites of various countries of various types having various resolutions and uh, once when the spot satellite of France, France when it was launched that was the beginning of using satellite images or stereo pairs to create uh, digital elevation models employing this photogrammetric technique and uh, after that uh, continuously we have been uh, word over we have been using satellite images mostly nowadays to generate a digital elevation model. And digital elevation models uh, at different spatial resolutions have been generated so far uh, for the earth. But similarly uh, digital elevation models for moon, Mars and asteroids have also been generated. And these digital elevation models of moon and Mars you can see uh, on Google Earth or some other portals where you can very clearly see. 
in Google Earth, in Google Earth and especially when we uh, instead of not Google Moon or Mars, when we see Google Earth, then in the background uh, where from where we get the elevation value, though we do not see directly on a screen except when we use the 3D perspective view or fly through, then we, we see a, a you know terrain representation in 3D. Otherwise, in the background when we want to see the height of a point or a location on the surface of the earth, that information is coming from digital elevation model. So, uh, many, many places now and uh, these are playing very, very important role and lot of applications nowadays are based on digital elevation models. So, in next uh, uh, say 10, 12 uh, uh, lectures discussions, we are going to mainly focus on digital elevation models, how they are generated and uh, what are their derivatives, different derivatives and how those derivatives can be employed including we will also be discussing surface hydrologic modeling using digital elevation model in GIS. As you know that DM is a raster uh, data. So, it is a basically an ordered array of numbers or a two dimensional matrix that represent the spatial distribution of terrain attributes. And here what is terrain attribute is generally we put elevation, but as I have mentioned any other attribute can also be used to create a 3D perspective. Now, DMs uh, in short we say DM or uh, in plural we can say DMs uh, rep uh, represents uh, basically the spatial distribution of elevation above uh, arbitrary datum in a landscape. Now, this arbitrary datum generally is what we uh, not really arbitrary. Uh, generally, when we use the elevation uh, values for as uh, cell values of our this uh, two dimensional array, then this is not an arbitrary datum, then it becomes above mean sea level. But in case of some other concentration, or water level uh, in a subsurface condition, water table in a subsurface condition or maybe concentration of certain elements in soil or water or pH value or similar things, then we, we use this arbitrary datum. Otherwise, for typical uh, elevation purposes, it is not an arbitrary, this is above mean sea level. Now, there are two other terms which are now also coming in our discussion or in literature or in softwares. The first after this DM, there is another term which is called DSM. So, DSM is basically is a digital surface model. So, here elevation word has been replaced by the surface. That means, it is only representing the uh, whatever is present on surface. So, DSM by definition is the a surface which can also represent ground water levels, chemical qualities or soils or water. So, when you do not the do not have the cell value as elevation, instead you are having some other values, then you can also call a DSM. But the most popular and common term is of course, DM. So, uh, this uh, basically when we say DM, this is the most common digital data of the shape of the earth surface and the shape, this is the important shape of the earth surface is the cell based DM or raster data. Now, DM is used as input uh, to quantify the characteristics of the land surface. And uh, uh, what are those characteristics? If we start narrating, these are like slope, aspect and uh, gradients and uh, drainage network, water set boundary and so many other characteristics are there. So, these are the characteristics of the land surface and uh, the purpose here is to quantify the characteristics because it is a digital elevation model and therefore, the analysis which we do implying digital elevation model is quantitative analysis not really a qualitative analysis. And as we also know that uh, this has been discussed earlier also that uh, DM is a raster representation which is a continuous surface and usually reference to the surface of the earth when we are go doing work on the for the surface of the earth. But nowadays people have started working on surface of the moon and Mars. So, instead of that it can be replaced by the Mars or moon. Now, as we know that the surface of the earth are usually modeled with raster data sets because the surface of the earth having a continuous characteristics. And uh, you know like for example, 
uh, one part of land or continent ends, then sea comes, then when sea ends, the land comes. So, therefore, all around the globe, it is continuous. So, that is why raster is the best way to represent that surface of the earth. And as you know that I say basically matrix of the cell organized in rows and columns and covering parts of the world. So, when we discuss raster that time also the similar discussion has come, but just for completeness I am uh, repeating some parts so that uh, when we uh, really go for the digital elevation and its applications we must understand everything. Now, also as you know that raster is uh, the unit of raster is always square and it contains a value a numeric value that is measured by or estimate for that location. So, if we are employing say uh, satellite images to generate digital elevation model, then that value is estimated. But when we if we can go on every cell of the grid and can do the measurements, then that will be the measurement. So, generally that these surfaces which we are using as DM or DSM, they are representing estimated uh, values for each cell. Like uh, if I am having point data when I uh, submit for interpolations, it creates surface that is a raster surface. And uh, except for those locations where I am having observations or measurement, otherwise all are estimates or predicted value through interpolation. Now, this, is, this uh, uh, data I have been showing earlier, this is example data, a digital elevation model when it is represented in form of gray this is how you see that generally the practice is the higher values will have lighter shades or white color or a darker values will have a dark shade, dark gray shade or black color and in between rest of the values are varying. So, if I uh, observe this digital elevation model then very simply the, I can say that the minimum elevation within this area of a digital elevation model which is uh, being displayed is a 95 meter and maximum is 3070. So, also if I start studying this one, then I find that uh, probably these are the uh, drainage systems, natural drainage or stream network which I am seeing quite clearly. So, when you display like this, of course, you can also bring colors as well, but uh, uh, generally in default in most of the softwares whenever the first time you display a digital elevation model, it would be displayed as a continuous and uh, the minimum and maximum value you can see as well as it will come in grey color. So, you say most of the time this is the scenario. Now, as I have said you can instead of using a grey palette or a grey scale, you can use a colored scale as well, no issue. Remember that uh, the, the, the colors uh, do not matter, what really matters the cell value or value of the data whether it is a point line polygon or a cell or pixel of a raster. So, this basically the value and now instead of assigning values between black and white and rest are in gray, I can assign values in terms of colors and if I do it this is how I get the results. So, sometimes we represent our uh, these surfaces in simple gray scales or may be used for colors also. Now, uh, as you know that the DM is raster, it is a 2D matrix and each unit is a cell is a square in shape, overall shape of the grid or DM can be either or rectangular. And when we will discuss uh, about the no data, and uh, when we discuss about the no data at that time also this came. So, what, what would happen if I want to represent a DM for a political boundary or a uh, hydrological boundary, then at that time it is and uh, the shape of that boundary is not a square or rectangular. So, then the concept of no data comes there. Otherwise, in the system or concept wise is a two dimensional matrix and this two dimensional matrix can have only two overall two shapes either square or rectangular. So, uh, uh, this uh, sometimes you may find in some literature they call as a height map, DEM as a height map. Only you can call height map when you are representing cell value as elevation value, then it is fine when representing elevation. When it is re not representing elevation, then one should not call as a height map.
Now, uh, there is another way of representing surface uh, or of a terrain that is through tin. So, tin is also uh, can be used here, though it is written here is the vector based because there we are using basically triangles or facets, but truly as you know that uh, it is neither a vector representation of the surface or nor a raster representation, though it is continuous. So, it fits say in that sense in the category of raster, but it is a, a, it is not discrete. So, that is why uh, it is not very easy to put either with vector or raster. So, let us consider tin as a completely separate data model to represent a surface. And uh, basically as you know that when we have also discussed in detail about tin, so this primarily measured as dm whereas the raster dm is referred as a secondary or computed dm because we employ either the satellite images then photogrammetric technique and then estimate the values for each pixel or cell. Now, here also we employ sometimes using point data the interpolation. So, that is why it is mentioned that uh, uh, tin is a primary uh, measured uh, surface and whereas your uh, raster DM is the secondary computed DM or surface. And these uh, uh, DMs I uh, already mentioned that they uh, nowadays they are being prepared or developed using various techniques and various techniques among them is of course, the based on stereo pair techniques which is imply the photogrammetry technique. Then uh, INSAR technique is another uh, one and very famous product from INSAR technique and the, the INSAR stands for SAR interferometry and SAR stands for synthetic aperture radar. This is a radar remote sensing based technique. So, in short we say INSAR and a, a, a subtle radar topographic mission or SRTM global DM has been generated using uh, this INSAR technique. Whereas, like Cartosat, our Indian satellite or SPOT or many other satellites, Aster and others, they have used stereo pairs and photogrammetry technique. And land surveying is another way collect the point data and do, do the interpolation again you can create a surface and a DM or you can use another technique which is laser based and which is LIDAR. Generally, it is used on ground to create a 3D perspective of buildings or other features, but nowadays airborne LIDAR is also possible. So, at a very high resolution digital elevation models can be generated employing LIDAR. Various techniques, one more is a thermal remote sensing technique is has also been developed uh, by us to uh, create a digital elevation model of a quite good accuracy to some extent. So, some maybe in future we may see few more techniques to develop uh, digital elevation models. When you go inside of a digital elevation model, on the right side the matrix which you are seeing is uh, basically it is for our understanding a biomass is there, but these boundaries or lines are not there at all in the data. For how the data is represented something like this. So, when, when I put my cursor on the right side uh, sort of matrix, I get the value something like this. So, and the of course, the here this cursor is bringing a you know 2 by 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 uh, display also. So, all these uh, these are the columns and these are the rows and uh, your data for every cell you are having data. Again, the lines which you are seeing here are just for our understanding. In fact, there are no lines, only the numbers are written in two dimensional matrix. So, when uh, one looks at DM, we do not see the cell matrix, we see only the values or we can use the symbols as a color or gray scale. Uh, to display on our screen as I have shown earlier in my example. So, there before the date and uh, before the display it is uh, that values are assigned certain color or gray scale and then on the screen the you this is what you see, but in the system it is nothing but a two dimensional matrix and uh, there are no lines columns or other uh, there are of course, columns and uh, rows, but there are no lines or wire mass, only the numbers are there 
in form of two dimensional matrix this you have to remember but always whenever we want to explain we always use the lines and columns and rows and then we'll talk about the values which are there now uh, like a spatial effects or derivatives of digital elevation model which is very popular derivative is called hill shading or shade relief model srm may also used to may also used to simulate relief that means we can add we can use that z value the elevation value as z value and can create a 3d perspective kind of thing and that that means that will bring a terrain to real life rather than just simple gray scale and we will have a shade relief model which will give you a good feeling or real feeling about the terrain so here uh, this is the example and uh, what what it has been done that uh, using that uh, digital elevation model which i showed earlier which was in gray scale and on the right side i kept uh, the colored one also but here what happened that uh, using that digital elevation model a hill shade or shade relief model has been generated and colors have also been provided and therefore now appearance of uh, that uh, is, a, is a you can say is one of the very common product of digital elevation model is creating a hill shade and this hill shade is now bringing very clearly uh, your valleys and ridges etc like here i earlier also i uh, mentioned that uh, one can uh, utilize uh, these lines to understand that these are representing drainage network like here and so on so the interpretation uh, becomes much easier everyone can understand after seeing this shade, hill shade that which is the higher ground which is the lower ground what are the ridges what are the valleys so the terrain Uh, appears very uh, close to the reality uh, whereas when we are having just representing in gray form without hill shading and uh, then it becomes little difficult to understand the entire terrain now uh, though uh, both are raster models as you know that uh, image and grid uh, because we also combined image with our dm to create a 3d perspective like in case of google earth so whenever you use the terrain and uh, when you start uh, creating a tilt and other things that is what you are doing that in the background a digital elevation model has been used first to create a uh, 3d perspective or hill shade and top of that then satellite image is drawn but remember both are raster but there are uh, very small differences these differences we have also discussed earlier but just for completeness i am uh, you know reviewing that one that uh, overall like uh, in case of grid it is also and uh, the overall shape of image is a rectangular or a square and each cell each unit here is called pixel and uh, always whereas uh, the shape of that one is always a square in shape that is always a uh, square in shape and uh, whereas overall shape of raster whether it's a image or grid can be square or rectangular so these are two major differences otherwise uh, everything is same the major difference is, is that uh, that image the unit is called pixel rather than cell so it becomes much easier when i whenever i say pixel i mean i am talking about image and whenever i say cell i am i think then i am talking about the grid so unit here in case of image is always called pixel whereas unit of grid is called cell both are raster second is the values that is another very big difference is uh, difference between these two rasters that image can carry only positive integer values whereas grid can have both positive and negative integers and real numbers all types of values but it has to be numeric only a cell value can be but pixel value is always positive integer value. so these are the two major differences between image and grid now here if you if you see uh, a, any these images and uh, the example is given here that this this is the image so the cell uh, pixel values are in integer form no decimals 
but this is about the grid or a digital elevation model and therefore the values are also in real numbers and that is precision up to 2 places after decimal. So, likewise and both are though raster, but the, there is a difference between the cell values. So, grid uh, DM values can be or cell values can be either integer or real floating numbers. Also, uh, grid values can be negative also, whereas in case of uh, image, these has to be only positive integer values. So, here in case of grid, we can have negative values, we can have positive values, we can have integer values, we can have real numbers. Now, three terms. Earlier we touched little bit about DSM and DM. Now, there is another term which is called DTM, digital terrain model. Though DM is also representing terrain, when, when we are using this E is for elevation. But there are some slight differences which are now being uh, uh, considered because of the new techniques which we are employing to generate digital elevation model. So, what you are seeing here, the red dashed line and that is what the dig DSM, digital surface model. So, any object which is present on the earth, when it is represented uh, top of that surface, top of, uh, top of that surface which is going above of all these objects then we re truly it is called a digital surface model DSM. And uh, when we employ this LIDAR technique, this is what the LIDAR does. It creates a digital surface model rather than DM. Though there are techniques by which we can remove these like uh, here a house or tree or bush, we can remove them. And then if we can remove, then it becomes a uh, digital elevation model or digital terrain model here. Now, there will be again so difference between elevation and uh, terrain model. So, let us go on that part also that a DM is a representation of the elevation of the earth surface above a certain datum and generally our datum is mean sea level in digital form. And this, uh, uh, this is achieved taking elevation measurements a regular for every 50 meter or irregular space point for every 3 arc seconds above the earth surface. That means, we are having some way of filling each cell of that grid with some elevation value. And there are various acronyms used to describe digital elevation models, but there are two very popular ones are digital terrain model and digital surface model. Digital surface model is generally generated by the LIDAR technique. Now, when we, when we uh, see a simple DEM or when we say digital elevation model, this is how it is represented as a top figure. Here you are not having any feeling of terrain. If it is in grey color, just by using grey colors or that understanding, you can say which is higher ground or lower ground. But if I change that palette uh, just opposite, which is possible in software, then it would be a completely reverse scenario. So, in that way and uh, that, that is considered as a simple DM, but here as you can say the DM with SRM or Hill said where uh, both uh, are there the same input, but one is SRM and another one DM and DM that is the color one is over the surface. So, we call as a and DM with SRM. Now, here this is DTM with digital terrain model and this is DSM. So, this DSM the bottom one is having each objects recorded from the top. So, whether it is a tree, a house or building anything, everything is recorded. But when we remove this one, then it becomes a, a sort of DTM. So, what I am trying to say that there is less difference between DM and DTM, but there is a definite difference between DM and DSM. Same D, DTM and DSM. DSM is completely different than DEM or DTM. So, uh, sometimes people use terrain when, when it is related with the real elevation, then we can call as either DM or DTM. But uh, as you know that uh, DM has become a generic word, so this E value can be any other value. 
So, therefore, a new term has been introduced that whenever we say dtm, it means the elevation and the cell value is elevation value. And whenever we say dm, that means that either it is elevation value or the cell value or the cell value can be any other value. So, dm is a very generalized term compared to dtm which is only related with the elevation and dsm includes all surface features which are present before, uh, during the survey. So, DMs are commonly built using data collected using remote sensing techniques, but they have also been built from land surveying. Like I, if I am having contour lines, I can create inter, implying interpolation techniques, I can create a DM. If I am having point elevation data, I can uh, using interpolation, I can create a DM, no problem. So, elevation or DMs are used in our GIS and our most common basis for digital produce relief maps or shady relief model that is very very popular product of a digital elevation model. While this digital surface model or DSM may be useful for landscape modeling, city modeling, visualization applications because in many applications they want uh, not only the height but they want recording of all surface features. And whereas DTM is with or DM is without surface features. So, we for that purpose DT and DSM are quite useful. So, D, DTM is often required for flood or drainage modeling, whereas DSM is for different purposes and other studies are there. So, depending on your requirement, one can choose these, but D, uh, DSM are generated when we imply this LIDAR technique. Now, of course, uh, there is no universal uh, usage of term digital elevation model or D DTM or DSM in scientific literature. Syn sometimes people are using synonymously, but as I have explained, all three terms are different and one should not get confused after this discussion. So, we have already discussed that what is uh, DSM, DTM and other things. And then as you also know that uh, DM as I have already said is a generic term, a common term for DSM and DTM, but DTM and DSM are also different surfaces. Other definitions also equalize the terms DM or define this subset of DTM which also represent other morphological elements. So, it is always better if we are uh, using uh, in general terms um, uh, say DEM, if you are using for only elevations you may call DM or DTM, but if you are having surface feature recorded also like in case of LIDAR then you can call DSM. So, uh, there are also definitions which equalize the term DEM and DSM and uh, which is defined as DM which is of course regularly space grid and DTM is a three dimensional model. So, for TIN also we can call as a DTM. So, most of the data providers which provide lot of DMs, they all use this term DTM, most of them, generic term which is DTM or sometimes you may get usage of term DSM if it is based on the LIDAR technique. But otherwise if you go on these sites like Earth Explorer of USGS or ERS DEC or any other these sites or like ISRO that is Bhuvan and they go for downloading of the uh, digital elevation model or these elevation models, you would find they are using term DEM. So, all data sets which are captured with satellites, uh, aeroplanes uh, through aerial photography or other flying platforms are originally though they are DSMs, but uh, uh, they are called DEMs. Like for example, SRTM which is a subtle radar topographic mission in which SAR interferometry was used or raster uh, sorry uh, ester GDM which is ester is the name of satellite, GDM is global DM. So, again DM word has been used and uh, though they may be having some recordings of surface features and generally the term DM is used as in generic term for DSM and DM. Now, and DTM uh, uh, is a DM basically which we have already discussed, but it is also 
and that a dm that represent elevation the bare earth without taking into account of any overground features. So, what I am uh, would like to say at this stage that uh, there is uh, even dm is also not very pure. Pure means it is not truly representing, it is supposed to be representing the bare earth uh, model of the earth, but when it is based on satellite data then at that time it may also be recording some features which are either trees or artificial man made created man made features. So, this uh, uh, this is the uh, problem and now when we talk about this uh, SRTM that uh, which has covered about 80 percent of the globe or earth and uh, uh, this uh, about uh, 90 meter or 3 arc seconds and uh, digital elevation model has been generated. But now uh, 3 arc seconds is roughly equal to 90 meter, 1 arc second is equal to roughly 30 meter. So, for uh, now 30 meter spatial resolution SRTM based digital elevation model of entire globe except for polar regions is also available. Earlier it became available first for American countries and later on now for the entire world. Now, here some countries are having some extra or uh, high resolution surfaces like in US and uh, uh, many other countries a DTM has a slight different meaning. So, again country to country it will vary. So, one has to be little careful. I would suggest the best way uh, to address any of these surfaces is use word DM and uh, because DM is a generic word there will not be any argument or confusion about uh, these things. So, with this uh, I end this discussion. Uh, please whenever you get time on these softwares explore any just add one DM which you can download if you just type in Google like uh, SRTM DM download you would be uh, taken to some portal and a simple login uh, credentials would be required and once you are through you make you can search for your area of interest uh, initially download just one tile add into the software in your view and start exploring that means uh, zooming it seeing the values and also then uh, try to uh, extract part of that dm using some arbitrary boundary and then you can practice or see and understand what is the concept of no data. So, with this uh, thank you very much. <laughs>